Look, we have a lot of fun here at Remember the Game Industries. You've all heard my obnoxious, high-pitched laugh on the show. I love it. Video games are fun. The Simpsons are funny. It's good times. You know what isn't fun? Shopping for razors. And I don't mean that to sound sarcastic. It genuinely sucks. That's why you shouldn't shop for razors. You should just get them delivered by Harry's. Pick up a $3 trial set at harrys.com slash RTG and see what I'm talking about. I'm not going to stop beating the Harry's drum because it's a drum worth beating. The best razors on the market at better prices than the crap at the store and they're delivered to you. It's like a shaving cheat code. You've heard me say it. I have been a Harry's customer since I was driving a forklift at a company I'm not a allowed to name but you all know who it is and sure my beard gets some praise now but i was a stubble guy for a long time and i still use harry's blades to keep the edges of my beard crisp so it looks like i have a jawline and if you've ever tried to shave along the edges of a beard you know that you can go through blades fast because there's a lot of weeds to whack in there but harry's blades just keep coming back for more i'm not just saying it they're so much better than the junky stuff you get at the store that means a faster cleaner shaving and two you buy less blades because they last longer the best razors for less money brought right to your door i don't know how else to say this harry's is on top for a reason the best reviews in the business customizable delivery schedules so you get them when you need them i can't see a reason not to use Harry's. Getting ripped off isn't funny. Switch to Harry's. Get started with a $13 trial set for just $3 at harrys.com slash RTG. That's harrys.com slash RTG for a $3 trial set. Hello, everybody, and happy Monday. Happy May Long Weekend if you live somewhere where you celebrate May Long Weekend. I hope you had a great weekend, and I thought I'd uh, kick your week off with a little bit of a kick in the bum with an extra podcast. As you know, I've got so many extra shows over on Patreon now that I've started giving away the occasional freebie here on the Remember the Game feed, and this week I thought I'd drop a game patch over here. This is our weekly gaming news podcast that goes live every Friday morning. I talk about all the biggest news in the world of PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, and gaming as a whole. I also talk about that week's new releases, give you a couple of sales picks on each console, mix in some of my opinions, some profanity, and I mean, you know how it works around here by now. Uh, This was last week's game patch. This is game patch 187.0. It was called Old Games in New Places, and it originally went live on May 17th of 2024. So if you like this, consider throwing us a couple of bucks over on Patreon and getting one of these every Friday. I'll keep you in the loop in all the biggest world or all the biggest news in the world of video games. And if you don't like it, well, it was free. So what are you going to do? Uh, good enough for me. I'm going to queue up vertical noise and let you listen to the podcast. I hope you all enjoy it and uh, have a great week. Take it easy, everybody. My name is Adam Black, and welcome to Game Patch. Remember the Game Industry's weekly gaming news podcast. This is patch number 187.0, and it includes Square Enix games aren't selling enough, so they might start showing up in strange new places. Xbox games aren't selling enough, so they might start showing up in strange new places. Super Mario Land is on Nintendo Switch Online now, which isn't strange at all, except that it wasn't already there, which is fucking weird. And a whole bunch more. It's a busy week. Your patch is installed. Let's fucking go, baby. Several episodes of experience that makes me an expert. I'm the judge, and you're the liar. And my audience is my bias to hire. Hell yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Patch. It is our weekly gaming news podcast here to remember the game industries where we look at the biggest news in the world of video games, sprinkle some profanity on it, bake it up nice and a golden a brown, and basically just kill an hour or so every week. And a huge thank you to UK band Vertical Noise for providing the theme music for the show. The song you hear every Friday is called A Certain Host of a Certain Talk Show. And you can find it in all of Vertical Noise's music wherever you get your tunes. Every week, those guys fly into Edmonton all the way from the UK just to perform that clip that you hear and this week they were actually telling me about the days before they were famous from being on game patch and vertical noise and everything uh they were in a barbershop quartet and they blew up and became world famous for like two months so they hadn't performed in a while so they got together on a roof of a pub near my house and performed some of their songs and a british guy rolled by in a limo and said it had been done and left eating a bag of brownies it was 
Pretty fucking weird. Anyways, thank you to them for providing the theme music for the show. And of course, thank you to you for listening to the theme music to the show. Because if you're hearing this, watching this, or checking this out live on the old stream, you support us on the old Patreon box. And if that is the case for my old heart, thank you for the support. I'm feeling it. I've had three coffees today. I'm feeling fucking rah. Let's get into it. We have a lot to talk about this week. It's nice. We finally got like a busy week of news. It's not one of those weeks. Well, I mean, it's... I feel like this show is usually, rom, rom, you know, semi-entertaining. I try. But some weeks, there's just not a lot to talk about. That is not the case for the next hour or so. So hold on to your butts. Let's get this party started. As always, we're going to start with the multi-platform stuff, the general gaming news, and then we'll go to PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo in that order. And I want to kick things off by talking about Square Enix. Enix? Enix? Square. They revealed some sales information this week. And it's not good news if you're Square Enix. Uh, Apparently, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Final Fantasy XVI, and their Splatoon spinoff, Foam Stars, all underperformed financially. I just have to cut in and say, did anyone have high expectations for Foam Stars? I'm not shitting on it. I'm not saying it's a bad game. But that one doesn't... I mean, Rebirth shocks me. Final Fantasy XVI, to a lesser extent, shocks me. Foam Stars, I'm like, oh, what a surprise. A big live service game didn't work. There's tons of them. It's so hard. But anyways, uh, all three of them underperformed financially. Bloomberg is reporting that the company's income is down approximately 26% year over year. And it has the powers that be at Square Enix headquarters reevaluating some of their life choices. The big announcement coming out of all this is that Square wants to get away from the strategy of releasing games exclusively on PlayStation consoles and wants to take on a multi-platform approach. Does this mean Final Fantasy VII Remake, Rebirth, and whatever the third one ends up being come to Xbox? Maybe they end up on the next Switch? Time will tell, but it sounds like that's what Square has in mind. Uh, They're also looking at scratching some of the projects that they're concerned won't make a buck and are apparently taking on a a quality over quantity approach, which seems like a good, albeit obvious call. Doesn't it? Make a few good games instead of making tons of crappy ones. I, who would have thunk it? But anyway, the whole going multi-platform stuff, uh, that's interesting. That makes sense. Now, Moses McGillicuddy wrote in and said, who would have thought if you offer it to more people, then more people will buy it? Of course, right? Like, I, I, I had to, it's the obvious, but of course. Now, there's more to it than that, right? Like, Nova Crane wrote in and said, this would be cool to see. I don't know why they didn't go this route at first, to be honest. I am speaking slightly out of my ass here, okay? But like, I've been covering gaming news for 187 weeks now, and I've been reading about it for longer than that. I'm 90% sure the reason games like Final Fantasy 16 and Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, etc. Uh, launched exclusively on PlayStation is because PlayStation paid them to keep them exclusive on PlayStation. I may be wrong, but I'm almost positive that that's why they're staying there. Uh, that said, you know, Squ- Square still gets... And again, speaking out of my ass, but I know the general rule of thumb is that the storefront gets about 30% of a sale price. So let's just use that number. So let's just say you're selling Final Fantasy 16 here in Canada for 80 bucks Canadian and PlayStation gets 30% of that 80 bucks. That's $24. So that leaves $56 that is going to Square Enix and then taxes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you're right, you're cutting out a whole lot of player base in Xbox, and I mean, Final Fantasy 16 wasn't running on the Switch, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, Sony is cutting them a check for an undisclosed amount to say, hey, keep your game here. And clearly Square Enix has done the math and decided, hey, we think we could make more money selling this everywhere than we can selling it just here, taking our percentage and then taking whatever that lump sum you're paying us to keep the game exclusive here. But that's as far as I'm, and I might be wrong. I'm not in the gaming industry. I've just been reading the news every week for fucking like four years. Well, longer than that, but whatever the fuck. Uh, I, I think that's what it is, is that they're they're paid to keep it there. And they've clearly decided that this just isn't worth it anymore. Uh, Nova Thunder, or part of Nova Thunder. Nova Crane and Nathan Thunder. Nova Thunder. Nathan Thunder wrote in and said, I, for one, would have played these games minus Foam Stars. They won if they'd come on my Xbox Series X or Steam Deck. Hoping Squeenix had made some quality ports, can make some quality ports of these and future games. Yeah, and a lot of the comments were that. Either like, I would have played these if they were on Xbox. I would have played these if these were on uh, Switch. Uh, Switch was the one people asked for the most. I don't think the Switch was running Final Fantasy 16 or Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. But who knows? Maybe the new one does. And uh, I and I honestly, I thinking about it just now, this just came to me. I wonder if a small part of Square's thought is like, like, look, Xbox, 
we're about to talk about Xbox sales. Like, we know that Xbox isn't doing particularly well, but there's still tens of millions of those consoles out there to sell these games on. The Switch is, there's there's a hundred some million of them. And I know Final Fantasy 16 can run on the Switch, but if it can run on their next system and Nintendo's next system is as successful as this one was, you'd be, you'd be a fool, an April fool, to not have your game on that system if you had the option. So I think that's where they're really eyeing it up. But uh, we'll have to wait and see because I'm, I'm sure they've got contracts and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's interesting to hear that they're, they're thinking about it. I'm all for it. You know, I know that console exclusives are a necessary evil, but uh, the more people that can play the more games, the, the more people can argue with each other online about the games. And really, isn't that what gaming's all about? It's just arguing with each other online. So good for them. We'll see. Uh, after a few days of leaks and hearsay, Ubisoft has officially revealed the next mainline game in the Assassin's Creed series, Ass Creed Shadows, will release on PC, Xbox Series, everything, and the PS5 on November 15th. They just dropped a quick teaser trailer, but it showed that players will have the chance to play as two different characters this time. A samurai named Yasuki, who seems to focus on fisticuffs and just barging into rooms and fucking people up. And a shinobi named Nao, Naoi, who is the stealth stabby stabby Assassin's Creed character that you're probably all accustomed to. The game is set back in feudal Japan and it looks fucking gorgeous. Ubisoft is saying that as you play through the game, you'll be able to recruit other players to help you as you see fit. Quote, they are your eyes and ears on the field. So if you use them properly, they will help you to find what you're looking for or what you've missed. End quote. Now I don't play a lot of ass creed, so I don't know, but personally I read that as just a way to show you where unlockables or like where collectibles and mini side games and shit are on the map. Like just like, you know, like in most games you climb a tower and then it gives you all the icons and you go to the icon. That's what that sounds like to me. That doesn't sound that exciting, but I don't, I don't know. I, I don't play a lot of ass creed. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I do think it's cool that it's set in Japan. That's got my, that's, I, I have not played Assassin's Creed since the first one. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and say I will play this one. Cause honestly, probably a three out of four chance. I won't play this one. But the Japan setting does slightly tickle my pickle. Just just slightly. Uh, Ubisoft also said that Shadows will be roughly the same size as Origins was as far as the map goes. So again, November 15th, Assassin's Creed Shadows. I'm sure we'll get more information between now and six months to the day yesterday. The uh, Two days by the time you're hearing this, but six months away. Captain N said the fandom has been clamoring for a game set in Japan for some years now. As a fan and a player of all games in the series, I am skeptical of what the trailer showed, but hopefully or but hopeful they can get that original Ass Creed magic back. I have also seen a lot of people crying out for AC to go to Japan. It just seems like a natural setting. I, I Again, as someone that doesn't play them, the Japan settings got me just slightly interested. I, I think that's a great setting. Uh, give me a little Ghost of Tsushima and I'm, I'll be happy. Uh, Adam Future Blank already reviewed Jet Set Radio. Said, I've been a pirate, a Viking, a Spartan, and an Egyptian. A ninja slash samurai seems like the next logical step. It does, doesn't it? Who wins in a fight between a pirate, a Viking, a Spartan, an Egyptian, and a ninja? I think you have to go with the ninja, don't you? It's fucking ninja. Like, can't tell me one of the Ninja Turtles wouldn't fuck all these guys up. I, you gotta go with the Ninja. And Joey Jojo Jr. Shabadoo, which is the worst name I ever heard, wrote in and said, The culture war outrage around this game will be out of this world. Joey, that's not what gamers do. I mean, you're probably right. But come on, gamers don't go online and fight with each other about everything. Grow up. Anyway, November 15th, Assassin's Creed Shadows. Uh, I know a lot of you are stoked about the return of EA's college football games, and EA dropped some news this week. EA Sports College Football 25 will release on July 19th, and you can get access three days early if you shell out for the Deluxe Edition. EA also announced an EA Sports MVP bundle, which includes the Deluxe Editions of both College Football 25 and Madden NFL 25 at a $50 savings over buying the two Deluxe Editions separately. The cover athletes for College Football 25 were revealed as well. Michigan running back Donovan Edwards, Texas quarterback Quinn Ewers, and Colorado wide receiver slash defensive back Travis Hunter. Uh, if I screwed up any of those names or anything, I'm going to be honest with you all. I'm Canadian, if you didn't know. And college football gets about as much coverage here in Canada as the NHL gets in the U.S. So I have never watched a moment of college football. So I like football, but I've never watched college. I don't know who any of these people are, but neat. Uh, EA says that more information on college football 25 is coming on Friday, right after the show goes live, of course. So if they announce anything cool, we'll cover it next week. But we do have a release date of July 19th. 
I know a lot of you are stoked on EA's college football games coming back. Good shit. And apparently, part of the reason uh, they put the players on the cover was to just show, like, hey, this isn't like the previous college games where it's just not recognizing the players and giving them any money. This is, you know, throwing them a little bit of a bone anyway. It's better than nothing. I'll, I'll take it. It's better than nothing. Uh, I don't know how many of you saw this story, but I was a little shocked that it wasn't bigger, frankly. Marvel Rivals is an upcoming free-to-play shooter in the Marvel Universe, and the alpha for the game has launched. Content creators have been playing it and showing it off, which is normal, but then a copy of the contract that those creators had to sign to get into the alpha was made public, and it got people talking. Basically, anyone with access to the Marvel Rivals alpha couldn't be critical of the game game the contract said players couldn't make quote disparaging or sat 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 satirical comments excuse me about any game related material end quote or engage quote in malicious comparisons with competitors or belittling the game or the gameplay or differences of marvel rivals or providing subject negative reviews subjective negative reviews of the gameplay end quote fuck i suck in my job this is why i don't get offered invites to alphas uh the games the basically they said hey don't say anything mean about our game the game's developer Nick ease has addressed the story and apologized to gamers saying they're changing the contract and encouraging the players in the alpha to be honest about how they're enjoying rivals quote we sincerely apologize i sorry end quote <laughs> i took the deep breath because i just i really want to get through a quote without fucking it up so here we go okay this is net ease's statement on changing the contract for content creators playing the alpha of marvel rivals quote we sincerely apologize for the confusion, suspicion, and frustration caused by these excessively restrictive terms, and thank you for sharing with us. We cherish and appreciate every suggestion given by our players and always respect your feedback. We are currently working with creators who have expressed these concerns and are revising the current version to be less restrictive and more creator-friendly. End quote fucking swish. I finally got a quote right. As of now, Marvel Rivals will be PC exclusive. No official release date or window has been announced. I don't give a fuck about PC games, but I do think this game looks kind of neat it's kind of like overwatch meets marvel meets marvel so i kind of hope it does come to consoles uh the big thing to me is that the 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 uh the content creators playing the alpha aren't allowed to poo poo on the game and it's been well rumored and talked about for years and years and years that people that get early access to games aren't allowed to shit on them there's a difference between an embargo where like say say they gave me a copy of marvel rivals and they were like uh it hits the shelves on may 25th you can't say anything about it until May 24th. That's one thing. To tell people, go out there, stream it, show off the alpha, all that kind of stuff. Just don't make fun of the game or point out its flaws. Uh, that's something that's been rumored to have been going on for quite a long time, and it's a pretty bad look. And for that contract to come out and show that, that is... uh, that is Because you know there was no way they were walking that shit back if it didn't blow up online. So, not a not a good look. Uh, Johnny Two Legs said, Going to be keeping a close eye on these developers moving forward and won't trust any early access reviews of their games for the foreseeable future. I mean, I agree with you, Johnny, but I love the idea of Johnny Two Legs just standing on those two legs outside of their offices, just eating a sandwich and watching with binoculars and just being like, I'm fucking watching you. Uh, <laughs> if anyone else thinks that's funny, I do. Uh, and Boy Who Trades said, I've seen a lot of people compare it with Overwatch. It's like super close to what Overwatch did. Marvel Rivals pulled the classic, can I copy your homework, but I'll change it a bit so we don't get caught trick. Yeah, they did, but they put Marvel in it. So I, Overwatch is cool. At least the first one was. And I like Marvel, but it's, it's PC. I, don't, I hope it comes to consoles. I don't know. I don't particularly care about this game. But to see it straight up like in the flat in the print that a game developer told people they can't shit on their game, that's not a good look. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Podcasting's a weird job because I talk to you nerds all the time. Every day. I tell you all about my life, the good and the bad. The ugly. I kind of keep that offline. And it's not that I don't want to talk about it. I'd love to talk about it. I just need to pick and choose who I talk to. We all have stuff that just lives in our minds, rent-free, 24-7. Talking about them can really help because the longer you keep something bottled up, the more likely it is to blow. You've heard me say it before and you're going to keep hearing me say it. Therapy is the way. Therapists can be that ear to bend when you really need to get something off your chest and don't know who to talk to. And better help is a great way to go about it. I don't BS you guys. I don't say I've used something if I've never used it. I've personally talked to a BetterHelp therapist about the stuff going on in my personal life, and I genuinely found it helpful. To have someone to talk to that doesn't have any skin in the game, that can just listen and try to help me come up with a roadmap to get through the tough times, 
It's just invaluable. It has seriously really helped me. I've talked to my therapist through video and you can do it that way or you can do it over the phone or even just over chat and they give you as many schedule options as possible so you can work a session in around your life. It's licensed therapy as convenient as it gets. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Remember the Game today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Remember the Game. Anyway, uh, this next story, I don't, okay, I don't think there's any debate that if you compared current-gen consoles to the Simpsons characters trying to get into outer space, PlayStation is Barney Gumbel and Xbox is Homer Simpson. I don't think there's any debate there. But if a report from Nico Partners' research firm is to be believed, it's even uglier than we thought. Nico reports on video game and console sales, and they're claiming that in the first three months of 2024, Sony shipped 4.5 million PS5s, and their system outsold the Xbox Series Everythings at an approximate 5 to 1 ratio during that time. That's not all time. That's the first three months of 2024. 5 to 1. We knew PlayStation was kicking ass, but that is a lot of ass. Uh, fortunately for Xbox, there's still the swimsuit competition. Shout out to anyone that gets that reference. That's the story, is that PlayStation is outselling Xbox at a 5-1 to one clip in the in the first quarter of 2024. That is, that is fucking, that is a, that is like Panasonic 3DO. Well, maybe it's not that bad, but it's pretty big pounding. Benzeal909 said, I'm not surprised. Xbox has gone downhill since the 360. That was Pinnacle Xbox, in my opinion. I think that's Pinnacle Xbox in everybody's opinion. Nick GC said the same thing. The Xbox 360 will always hold a vaulted place in video game history. It's a damn travesty what Microsoft has done to its predecessors. I think you mean its successors. Maybe I'm wrong, but didn't predecessor be the original Xbox? Which was fine. And then the successors would be the Xbox One in the series. But the point stands. The, like, Xbox, listen, you may not remember it. Maybe some of our youngest listeners don't remember this, but like, the PS3 beat the Xbox 360, but the Xbox 360 gave the PS3 a run for its money. That's a lot of that's on Sony because they fumbled the ball at the PS3's launch and it took them a long time to clean that mess up. But Xbox was genuinely rolling during the Xbox 360 era. Then the Xbox One was just an abomination of a launch. And now the Xbox Series Everything. I like my Series X. But this has not been a kind, this has not been a good, fuck what, 10, 12 years for Xbox. They they have been struggling ever since. I don't know, we're going to get more into Xbox's struggles in a minute when we get to the Xbox section of the show. But they, we were just talking about this on the pre-stream. They just seem like a company that doesn't know what to do right now. Like, they just, the fact is, and I like Xbox. If you're new to the show, I like Xbox better than PlayStation. I like all three. But I like, like, if I, if I, have, if I have a multi-console uh, game, I prefer to usually play it on Xbox. I like the controller better. I like the ecosystem better. I still have a PS5. I play it all the time. It's, it's, it's awesome console. But I, I like Xbox. But you look at them ever since the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360, they were like, hey, we have great games and a great interface. And everyone should play games here. And then the Xbox One, they were like, hey, you can use it to watch TV. And we're like, we don't want to. And they were like, well, tough shit. And then it just didn't go well. And then the Xbox Series, everything came out. And they're like, we've learned our lesson. You guys don't want to work your TV with our cons with your console. We're like, yeah, we just want to play games. And they're like, play what? And we're like, games. And Xbox was like, oh, right, the games. Like, it has just been, it's sad. They used to be so good. I don't know what the fuck happened. Chris Pynchon wrote in and said, checks my Sega notes. All they have to do is get some peripherals attached to their systems, and they'll be fine. That made me laugh. You get on the show. If you make me laugh, it, you, you get on the show. Well done, Chris. Anyway, yeah, so that's the headline. PlayStation is outselling Xbox pretty horribly right now. It was also pointed out that the PS5 is a little behind the PS4 as far as sales at this point in their respective lifespans, but that's not a big deal with the chip shortages and everything that plagued the PS5 for the first couple of years. I also found this interesting, albeit not surprising at all. In 2015, digital games sales made up 19 percent of playstation game sales eight years later digital was 70 percent that is a f literal 50 percent jump like it went from 19 percent of the pie to 70 percent of the pie in eight years it's just we all know it's going that way but i didn't realize the swing was that big digital gaming man you don't have to like it but that's the way gaming be going so uh, Madden. I know Madden has become a bit of a, a bit of a punchline in gaming over the years. Well deserved on their behalf, but 
there was a time where both Madden and EA were awesome. And even if you hate Madden today, it's undeniably one of the biggest franchises in the history of gaming. And I love the history of gaming. So this story caught my good eye's attention. Prime Video has announced that they have a four-part docuseries about the Madden NFL franchise in the works. It'll start with the series launch back in the late 80s and work its way up to modern games. Prime says we'll see never-before-seen footage and the docuseries will explain how Madden almost never got started in the first place. No word on an official title or when it'll be on your TV screen. Now, most of you just wrote in with jokes. Bone on the Meat said, I'll wait for season two of the documentary to come out next year so I can get season one for five bucks. Phil Lencher said, the first episode will be free with your Prime subscription. $24.99 will unlock the last three episodes and an alternate opening sequence. But seriously, my best friend from college worked at Tiburon Studios and was a QA on Madden 2010, and he said it was an absolute nightmare working for EA. Did they not? Did they win the worst company a few years ago or was it the worst company to work for? I can't remember. I mean, the story checks out. I believe it. I wouldn't want to work at EA. I am the mutt said, uh, so will it be ready when they release it or will they have a day one patch just like their games? So lots of punchlines as we all expected, but a couple of you had serious comments. I'm genuinely really, I will watch this. I love watching stuff about the history of games. Virtual Alex 12 said, I loved playing Madden as a kid and I thought the games were great from conception up until they started doing all the microtransactions. Maybe this documentary will shed some light around who we should blame for adding all the micros you see in today's version. I'm interested in that too. I'm interested to see if this is like a fluff piece funded by EA to make Madden look good or if this is like an independent documentary that's going to call them like they see them and talk about the micros and stuff. I'm honestly not... That'll be all the difference. If it's just a fluff piece, this is going to suck. If it's genuine reporting and talking about all the things that EA's done wrong over the years and shit, this could be a really interesting watch. So, Nomad said, I've never been a fan of sports games in general, personal preference, but I'd absolutely watch this as I'm genuinely curious what goes into these games. Plus, Madden himself He's a goddamn legend. Goddamn right. Agree. I have nothing else to add. I'm interested. I will watch it. At least I'll watch the first episode. And then if it turns out to be a fluff piece, I'll probably turn it off. I don't... Uh, Adam Blank is no fluffer. And speaking of Prime Video, they've announced that a live action series based on Tomb Raider is in the works. It's being developed by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who signed on to write the series last year. Quote, If I could tell my teenage self that this was happening, I think she'd explode. Tomb Raider has been a huge part of my life, and I feel incredibly privileged to be bringing it to the television with such passionate... <laughs> voice crack. Such passionate collaborators. Lara Croft means a lot to me, as she does to many, and I can't wait to go on this adventure. Bats in all. End quote. No word on when the show will be done and be on your TV screens. It's not expected anytime soon. Fine by me. Tomb Raider could make a great fucking show. And now that the bar for video game TV shows has been set by The Last of Us and Fallout, that's what they need to be aiming for. That's what I'm expecting from Tomb Raider. It's capable of it. So take your time. Get it right. I don't give a fuck if I'm not watching this for three more years. Get it right. I'm interested. I, this is at least a day one. Keep an eye on it because I love Tomb Raider as well. Uh, Matt D., wrote in and said, I have a good feeling about this. Tomb Raider seems like it would affect well into a TV series. An overarching story with many Tomb Raids in each episode could be a lot of fun. It's all I want too. It's all I want. 100%. It's all I want. Have her fighting some bears and jumping around and bats and all that shit. I'm interested. Hopefully she controls better than she does in the games. But uh, I'm just going to say it again. Uh, if you have not played the modern Tomb Raider trilogy, come the fuck. Like, that's your smack through the microphone. Play them. And the third one is okay. But the first two games, better than Uncharted. And that comes from an Uncharted fan. I think the first two Tomb Raider games do Uncharted better than Uncharted. They are so fucking good. Must play games, in my opinion. Excellent games. Hopefully the show is good. So it's coming to Prime Video. Eventually, we don't know when. That is all your general gaming news. We still have three stops left. You know what they are. Let's queue up that PlayStation load-up chime I love so much. And let's check in with the station that plays. Many PlayStation gamers have a fever. And the only prescription is more Helldivers 2. Sony announced this week that Helldivers has surpassed 12 million units sold across PS5 and PC. And it's now the fastest selling PlayStation exclusive of all time, surpassing God of War Ragnarok. The CEO of developer Arrowhead Studios said, quote, What a massive achievement from everyone involved in realizing Helldivers 2. A massive thank you to the community for your support, passion, and dedication in the fight for democracy. End quote. Sony themselves said that the game far exceeded 
exceeded their expectations sales-wise and is their most successful PC game to date. It remains the most downloaded PS5 game in the U.S. this year and the best-selling game of 2024 through four months. Sony owns the Helldivers IP but partnered with Arrowhead to develop the games. Uh, good for them. It's proof. <laughs> Helldivers 2 is fucking proof that all these studios trying to create these games to get people to come online and play them over and over, like it's it's not impossible to tackle the online market. And if you manage to reach the top of that mountain, you will get very, very rich. And so for everyone wondering why every goddamn game developer in the fucking world these days is trying to develop a new online live service, always online multiplayer game like that, it's because of Helldivers 2. It's because of these, not just Helldivers 2, but games like this. Because if you manage to just perfect the formula and strike lightning ching fucking ching fastest selling playstation game of all time that goes back like 30 years that's fucking crazy good for them i good for them now i don't i have not played hell divers so i don't know what this democracy thing is but it had lots of likes from everybody so hokey riff said for democracy rubik said democracy has landed is it like so do you vote in hell divers I, I haven't played i don't know it doesn't matter it's a success. That's what matters. Andrew Wright said, Helldivers 2 is the game I was looking for when I took the leap and bought Back for Blood. This was the best $40 I've spent in a while. Yeah, fuck, I wanted Back for Blood to be good. Yeah, so many people in the community in our Discord and stuff are playing Helldivers 2. It's, uh, I'm really, it's awesome. It's nice to see, it's just like last year with Hogwarts Legacy. It's nice to see a, a I know Helldivers 2, it's not a new game, but it's nice to see a game that isn't COD just tackling the charts and everything. Really, really good story. Good for them. Well earned. Good for them. You know, they fucked up last week with everyone needs to log into PSN, but they, they fixed it. That's as they, you know, they were like, our cow is, is cashing. Let's keep milking. Let's not, don't need to put a, don't need to put this cow down yet. So good for them. Uh, this story broke right before I started recording. Uh, there's a dope Lego set based on the Horizon games. I have it. Actually, if you're watching the stream, it's right there on my shelf. And it features like a little mini Aloy standing next to a tall neck. It's pretty awesome. And now it sounds like a Lego Horizon video game could be on the way. Insider Gaming is reporting that an unannounced game that's essentially Horizon Forbidden West but with Lego is in the works. IGN has reached out to Sony for comment but apparently the line was busy. So that's the story right now. It came out Thursday morning. I just thought I'd throw it in there because it sounded cool. Apparently a Lego Horizon games uh, a Lego Horizon game is in the oven. So that's kind of neat. Uh, the new games for PS Plus Extra and Premium this month have been revealed, and uh, not every harvest can be great, my friends. Uh, these will be available on May 21st if you have the applicable subscription. For PS Plus Extra, you are getting Red Dead Redemption 2. There you go. Deceive Inc., The Sims 4 City Living, Crime Boss, Rock A City, The Settlers, New Allies, Stranded, Alien Dawn, Cat Quest, Cat Quest 2, The Lego Movie 2 Video Game, and Watch Dogs. I mean, Red Dead 2 is like, hey, that gets people looking. But then every, that's, it's, it's a fucking, it's a pretty ugly, it's, it's not a great fucking batch of games. Let's be honest. And then the game's coming to PS Plus Premium, G Police, Worms Pinball, and 2 Extreme for the PS1. Again, all available on May 21st. I'm going to put my cards on the table with the possible maybe exception of 2 Extreme. There's not a game in here I'm going to play. But Red Dead 2 obviously is a nice get. After that, it's, oof, it's kind of, it's kind of a rough batch. B Scratch said, I'm happy with this. I've always wanted to try Red Dead, but didn't want to purchase as I have a love hate for open world games. I'll check this out now for sure. I have played some Red Dead 2 on my Steam Deck. It's pretty, it's pretty, pretty wild game. It's pretty big. It's pretty awesome. But the rest of these, I don't know. Tim Tiani said, I'm not gonna be buy it's not gonna get me to buy PS Premium. And it certainly isn't what people consider to be a must-have for the service. But damn, I have good memories playing too extreme. No clue how it's aged, but those games were the OG Extreme Sports games before Cool Borders, SSX, Tony Hawk, etc. I had some I have some good memories of playing too extreme as well. I uh, I do a PS Plus Premium. I think I'm gonna let it expire this year. But I do have it right now. And uh, I might download Two Extreme and just give it a shot for old time's sake. I'm, I don't I imagine it's aged like milk, but I do have. Frankly, of all the games announced this month, that's what I'm most excited about, and that's uh, it's a fucking, uh, it's a fucking ugly batch. They clearly don't give a fuck about this service. That's, that's fucking ugly. Uh, this next story, I feel obligated to talk about, even though I don't know if anyone's actually going to give a shit or not. Uh, we all know that the CEO of PlayStation, old man Jim Ryan, is dead. Or retired or something. I don't know. Anyway, a br uh, brand new, uh, the brand, pardon me. I, I, mist I mistyped in my notes. 
Fuck, that would have been so good too. Old man Jim Ryan is dead or retired or something. I don't know. Anyway, the brand needs a new captain. That's what I was trying to fucking say. And it has two. As Hideaki Nishino and Herman Holst have been named joint CEOs of the station that plays. Nishino is in charge of tech, third-party studio relations, and the platform itself, while Holst will oversee first-party studios and film and TV projects. Again, I really don't know if this story means anything to anyone, but I could not bring it up. It's new CEOs of one of the biggest gaming platforms on the planet. Uh, I would just like to ask whichever one of them is in charge of improving the PS Plus Premium lineup. Please improve the premium, pl- the PS Plus Premium lineup, please. That's all I'm asking. Works for me, said, I can only imagine this went down like the episode of The Office when Jim Halbert and Michael Scott became co-managers. That made me laugh too. Nice pull works. That was good shit. Brett Thompson said, I really hope this means Sony's attitude toward backwards compatibility will change. Maybe we'll even see them become a little friendlier with their competitors. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for too. Give us more classic games on PS Plus if you're going to charge us for them. And and you're right. They... Um, it's well documented that Sony doesn't play well with others. Now that said, when you're on top of the mountain for as long as they have been, they don't really have to play well with others. You know, that's why they charge extra for crossplay and stuff. But I, I agree. I'd like to see them. Imp- I don't know if they will, but I'd like to see them improve those relationships too. Thing is, is like if Sony's, Sony's printing money, Sony's winning. Why change? Like I, when you're winning at Monopoly, you don't tell someone like, ah, you don't have to pay me rent this month. Don't sweat it. You fucking step on their throats. God, I love Monopoly. Uh, a new Sly Cooper game is being whispered about online these days. I know I'm pretty fucking excited. My nipples got hard. Uh, and then Jason Schreier came along and made my nipples soft again. He's a pretty reliable source, and he says it's just not true. People were speculating that the reason we haven't heard about Ghost of Tsushima 2 yet is because Sucker Punch is working on a new Sly Cooper game at the same time, and Schreier shot that down saying they're a one-project studio, and Ghost of Tsushima 2 is that one project. So I'm sorry to get your hopes up, Sly fans. I want it to. I wish they'd just give that IP to another studio preferably not a microsoft one because then it'll just die and let them make a new sly cooper game but i don't fucking god i fucking i just i really like sly cooper and i don't know why they don't i mean i like ghost of tsushima too make no mistake i'm fucking stoked for ghost of tsushima too but I want a new Sly Cooper game. Why the surgeon who's not a surgeon row said plot twist. Ghost of Tsushima 2 is the next Sly Cooper. We get Sly time traveling and dimension hopping. And he ends up or he shows up to join Jin and really put the hurt on the con and bad guys of Sly combo. That'd be fucking. That, no, that's that's fucking ridiculous. I love that idea, but that's fucking ridiculous. Can you imagine if they drop Sly or uh, Ghost of Tsushima 2 and it's like as photorealistic and accurate and everything as like Ghost of Tsushima 1 was and then all of a sudden fucking Sly Cooper shows up? Like, oh my God. People would, I don't know if people would be mad or excited. I, I think they'd probably be both. It's the internet. People would be both. I think that'd be fucking awesome. Uh, and then quickly, not a big story, but God of War Ragnarok is the next PlayStation game to get the PC treatment, reportedly. And reportedly, it's going to be revealed very soon, reportedly. D-Labs, a site that has broke several PlayStation PC announcements in the past, is saying that a Ragnarok port is expected to be announced in the coming weeks. A PlayStation State of Play is rumored to be going down soon, which sounds like a good place to announce it to me. And knowing that Xbox and Nintendo have showcases set for June, along with other studios and Summer Game Fest, a State of Play between now and the end of June seems like a pretty safe bet i bet you god of war ragnarok for pc is there ghost of tsushima launched on pc this week if you didn't know i'm not going to speak to how it runs on pc look up your own reviews i don't do pc but if it runs well that game you need to play it because ghost of tsushima is fucking awesome i love that game that's it as far as for playstation news as far as game releases this week there's nothing as far as sales on the psn this week minecraft is half price everywhere right now i know it goes on sale a lot and you all probably own it but every month that game's in the best-selling games list so people are still there buying it if by some reason you haven't bought minecraft yet you want to it's half price everywhere so go scoop it and i'm gonna shout out hi-fi rush rest in peace tango gameworks but hi-fi rush is half price on the psn and hi-fi rush is a great fucking game it is a it's a i don't know if it's must play but really good fucking game. So I'm going to shout out Hi-Fi Rush. I love that game. That is all your PlayStation news. Uh, now we're going to open the box of X. There's a lot of depressing news over there, but uh, we have to go in. So let's fuck it. It's like the desert level of this fucking podcast these days, the Xbox section. Let's go to the desert. Now, we'll start with something positive, at least. Xbox has announced the next batch of games coming to Game Pass, and there's a pretty notable name in here. By the time these words are in your brain, Chance of Senar is on cloud PC and console. Immortals of Avium 
is on Xbox Series Everything, PC, and Cloud, but only through Game Pass Ultimate because it's on EA Play. Uh, and then the cloud version of EA Sports NHL 24 is also on there as well. On May 21st, Senua's Saga Hellblade 2 is on Xbox Series Everything, PC, and Cloud. On May 23rd, Galacticare is on everything, as is Haunt, Haunty, Haunt I, Haunt I, I. Maybe that's Haunt 2. Mm. On May 28th, Moving Out 2 is on everything. Apparently that's like Overcooked, but with moving, and apparently those games are very fun. May 30th, you have Humanity on everything, which apparently is a very good puzzle game, and uh, Immortals, uh, Lords of the Fall, or pardon me, um... Now I'm tripping over my own words. Uh, Immortals of, of what the f what the fuck's going on here? What the fuck? I already said Immortals of Avium. What's going on? Why are my notes all fucky? Lords of the Fallen. I'm sorry, my notes froze, so they were stuck. I, God, you guys pay for this. This is on you. On May 30th, Humanity and Lords of the Fallen are on everything. Easy for me to fucking say. And then finally on June 4th, Firework and Rolling Hills are on. Uh, Rolling Hills is on everything. Firework is on PC. I suck at my fucking job. Uh, I think most people would agree that uh, Hellblade 2 is the uh, is the standout in this group. That's the one that's got people talking. I would argue that's the biggest Xbox exclusive since... Is it the biggest Xbox exclusive since Starfield? <laughs> Fuck. Wow. Wow. It might be, though. It's a big fucking game for them. And I think it's going to be good. I, I'd be surprised if it wasn't at least good. Uh, Russell Seg Segui. Segue. Wrote and he said, "I know it's on Game Pass, but given the current climate, I'd encourage anyone who can afford to to can afford it to buy Hellblade Two outright. If not, it's fine. I'm just worried. Also, don't pre-order. If it's broken, we don't want to encourage that. Yeah, don't pre-order anything. I will say, I get what you're trying to say, but like, if I'm gonna play it, I'm playing it on Game Pass. But that's me. I pay for Game Pass. I I I genuinely don't know if Xbox cares. I think, like, I don't know." I don't know. We'll get into it more in a minute. I don't even know what they want anymore. For the longest time, I think they were like, we don't give a fuck if you buy the game or not. Just play it on Game Pass because you pay for a Game Pass subscription. But that's exactly what everybody did with Hi-Fi Rush. Then they closed the fucking studio. So fuck if I know what Xbox wants anymore. Esteban Navarro said, I've been looking forward to Hellblade 2, even though I kind of forgot it was coming out since I've seen little to no marketing on it. And a few people brought that up, and you're right. Like, for months, Xbox would not shut the fuck up about Hellblade 2. And now that it's here, they aren't saying a word. It's fucking weird. I agree with that. And Big Papa Grimace said, Immortals of Avium looked like a good time when it was announced and I almost bought it. Just goes to show good things come to those who wait. I guarantee you, no game gets on Game Pass without somebody buying it first. So somebody bought Immortals of Avium and took one for the team for everybody else to get it on Game Pass. It looks like a sexy game. I don't, I don't know. Hellblade 2 is the one I'm kind of interested in. I thought Hellblade 1 was... Um, fucking gorgeous and the and the sound effects were out of this fucking world but i didn't care for the gameplay loop of just looking for shapes so i'm hoping that hellblade 2 adds a little bit more to that uh i'll probably give it a shot at some point because the first one was fucking wild so uh yeah so anyway that's your game pass editions if you're hearing this, you're probably a gamer. And for our kind, nothing is as precious and valuable as our save files. Have you ever experienced the loss of a save file? It's soul crushing. Dozens, maybe hundreds of hours of work gone like that. But at the end of the day, it's a video game. It matters, but kinda, you know? That exact scenario, but with a work project, an essay for school, data for your business, that's no joke. That could be really serious. You need a safety net. And I got you, fam, with my partners over at Crash Plan. Visit CrashPlan.com slash RTG for 50% off your first year of Crash Plan. Crash Plan has been protecting people's data since 2001. And a couple years ago, they set out on their own with one mission, to provide the best damn cloud backup solution on the market. Crash Plan runs quietly in the background of your computer or Mac, and every 15 minutes on the clock, they create a new backup of every file that's changed in that time. So if something goes wrong, God forbid, you don't lose hours, lose days, lose weeks of work. Just log into your account, and you can download your most recent backup from the secure cloud servers. And there's not just one backup. There's a laundry list of them. You can pick and choose which one you want. It's like the ultimate undo button. If you work on a computer in any capacity, Crash Plan is a must-have. And if you're thinking, ah, that's for big businesses, I'm just Joe Schmo. Crash Plan protects Joe Schmo. They offer a ton of plans and tiers. So there's a Crash Plan for everyone from small one-person businesses like me to you fancy businesses in offices with staff and free donuts and all that stuff. Time is money. Why wouldn't you protect your work? Spreadsheets, diagrams, videos, art, podcasts. 
Crash Plan has you covered. Don't let data disasters slow you down. Crash Plan has your back and keeps you moving. Go to CrashPlan.com slash RTG for 50% off your first year of Crash Plan. That's CrashPlan.com slash RTG for 50% off your first year. Back up better with Crash Plan. Now, this... This isn't so much a story as it is I want to draw attention to it in case you're interested. If you haven't seen it yet, Xbox president Sarah Bond did an interview late last week talking about the studio closures at Microsoft, and it's gone over about as well as my act does in comedy clubs, which is not not well at all. Uh, so I wanted to put it out there because I think it's an interview gamers would be interested in. An internal memo from Microsoft apparently told the remaining game developers that they need more creative award-winning games. But that memo came out right after Microsoft shut down Tango Gameworks, who developed a creative award-winning game in Hi-Fi Rush. Bond was asked, quote, One of the shuttered studios in particular just created a hit game. It did really well on Game Pass in terms of engagement and won a ton of awards. Should it succeeding in that way? ensure the future of a studio end quote sarah bond replied quote one of the things i really love about the games industry is that it's a creative art form it means that the situation and what success is for each game in each studio is also really unique there is no one size fits all to it for us we look at each studio each game team and we look at a whole variety of factors when we're faced with making decisions and trade-offs like that but it all comes back to our long-term commitment to the games we create the devices we build the services and ensuring we're setting ourselves up to be able to deliver on those promises end quote sounds like such a fluff it like that's such a like listen i like i get but like i'm not even done talking about it yet but like super dave wrote in and said the entire interview was awful you could see it in her face she was sent there to take the heat she couldn't wait to leave the room i agree with that i'm not gonna cry any tears for sarah bond because a i'm sure she's making millions of dollars to do that job and b i'm sure she played at least a part in the role in shutting down those studios but i do agree like what answer could you give when it when a story comes out saying that the the powers that be at Microsoft are like telling their studios we need more cool award winning games that get people talking, and that comes right after you shut down Tango GameWorks, who created a cool award winning game that got people talking. What are you supposed to say? You could come out and say, hey, you know, what what Madden needs to make to be considered a success is not what. Hi-Fi Rush needs to make to be considered a success. That's just what I need to make as a podcaster isn't what Joe Rogan needs to make to be considered a success, right? Like, I, everybody understands that. But to just come out and say that and then be like, but we're committed to the devices, the services, and setting ourselves up to make great games. And it's like, are you, though? Are you? Because you just let go of studios that made some pretty good fucking games, you know? I like Xbox. I've said that. They deserve all the shit they're taking right now. All of it. Every spoonful. They deserve it. Business is business. And unfortunately, layoffs are part of business. But for a brand that desperately, desperately needs good games right now, to close a studio responsible for a really good game is just a really bad look. I think they're squirming at Xbox right now. I don't think they know what they want. The Xbox 360 went toe-to-toe with the PS3. The Xbox One got fucking massacred. They thought they were reinventing the wheel with Game Pass and the Xbox Series everything. And I don't think... I love Game Pass, but I don't think Game Pass has been the success they wanted it to be. And I think now they're kind of out at sea without a map. Except for a map that shows them where all the Krusty Burgers are. Shout out, oh, last one, I, I promise. But like they're, they're kind of they're like... Okay, we can't just beat PlayStation at making $80 games and selling them and doing better than them. We, we've proven that we can't beat them at that game. Uh, let's create the subscription service where we put all our big day one games on it because Sony can't do that. And that's the one that gets everybody coming back over here. But now they haven't created any big day one games that anybody wants to play on Game Pass. Then they go and buy Call of Duty for $70 billion and now they can't figure out what to do with it. While they're doing that, they're closing studios that are making the very games that they thought they needed to have on Game Pass to get people over there. I'm sure that their thought process five, six, seven years ago was let's launch Game Pass, let's buy a bunch of studios, and then every 90 days we're dropping some big new must play game on game pass and that's why people will stay subscribed and never leave i'm sure that was the game plan and now years later be it because the studios are dropping the ball because microsoft is dropping the ball i don't know but that isn't working and now i don't think they know what the fuck they want to do 
I don't I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Captain Steve N wrote in and said, I honestly feel Xbox is dying. I know they have unlimited funds, but let's be real. Even the most wealthy boss is eventually going to say that's enough. Bill Gates thought the game system was going to replace PCs with apps and quick functions, but the cell phones did that. The game console is the heart of us gamers and they are losing the drive. People will only wait so long for a rebound. Nintendo has the market. You can say Sony is God here, but realistically, Nintendo has the iconic games, characters, and developers. They aren't going anywhere. If Xbox doesn't soon get us gamers and us and use the software companies we love instead of just dissolving them then they might as well close shop now it's well said i i mean i'll hear an argument for either nintendo or playstation being on the top of the the ladder uh the switch is kind of a different beast than the ps5 but they're both very successful at what they do and xbox has just kind of become the like we're rich, we want to be here, but we're not really sure what to do. And it's just... And you're right. I, I have many times... like So Branton Pham wrote in and said, Xbox just seems like a bunch of suits from Microsoft with no passion for gaming. For the longest time, I have thought, whether it was PR speak or not, Xbox came across as the most in tune with gamers. Sony had Jim Ryan, who didn't look like he's ever played a game in his life. Nintendo hates us. That's why they won't let people have Smash Brothers tournaments and stuff. Xbox had this guy, Phil Spencer, coming out leather jacket and kicks, and he plays Xbox. And they're like, we know you want backwards compatibility, so we're making sure every year we're bringing over, or every generation, we're bringing over our backwards compatibility. It really felt like that's what they were shooting for. But you're right. Now it's starting to come across like, hey, we have Banjo-Kazooie. We don't know what we're doing with it. We have Perfect Dark. We're not sure what we're doing with it. We have all these, like, Fable. Well, we might eventually make a Fable game. These guys made a great game, but we're closing them. Like, they just seem like they don't know. You're right. It feels like a bunch of... That's what the original Xbox kind of felt like. Halo was great, but it felt like Bill Gates trying to be like, I don't really play a lot of video games. Oh, wait. I assume Bill Gates sounds like Professor Frank's. Like, uh, I don't really play a lot of video games, hey, but I'm going to buy a bunch of... I'm going to make one anyway, and everyone's going to play it, and I'll get richer, and <laughs> whatever the fuck. And that's kind of what Microsoft is starting to feel like again. I Like, they need an identity. I don't know what their fucking identity is. I don't know. And I like them. I have been a fan of Xbox since the original. I hated the Xbox One. But I have been a fan of the Xbox since the OG Xbox. And I have no idea what the fuck they're doing now. Matthew Boyce said, I said it last week. If you're closing more studios than you have first-party games, there's a major problem there. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I have two more quick Xbox stories that talk about new things that they're trying to keep the company alive. Or the company. I mean, and that's the thing to keep in mind. The company is not on life support it's microsoft they literally have infinite they've entered a cheat code they have infinite money so they'll be around as long as they want to be around but they need to figure out something because they're just spending money right now and not making it back uh so here's two things they're apparently trying to make some of that money back uh the answer to their woes are clearly mobile games right microsoft has announced that they're opening their own mobile game store in july the store will be web-based Instead of a platform like Google Play or the App Store, so they can get it on as many devices as possible. The aforementioned Sarah Bond has confirmed that the store will launch with Microsoft-owned games like Candy Crush, which you may remember was part of that Activision Blizzard purchase. I don't know if it makes a ton of sense, but if it's web-based, then the cost probably isn't too drastic. And they spent $70 billion on Activision. They got to do what it takes to try to make that money back. Everyone thinks of Call of Duty and World of Warcraft when you think of Activision Blizzard. But Candy Crush was, and I assume still is, a money-printing machine. And launching it in their own store eliminates that 30% tax you pay on the App Store or Google Play. So... I don't give a fuck. I'm not, I used to play Candy Crush. I, I'm not going to play it again. But... You bought it, fucking, you might as well get it out there and like, why why pay Apple and Google the 30% when you don't have to? I get it. It makes sense. So, Toby OP said, I look forward to them purchasing and subsequently closing 100 mobile game studios next year. And Nostalgio said, damn, will Apple and Android even allow that? I thought they kept a monopoly on the storefront territory. Well, if you remember, like, Apple and Epic went through that whole fight with Fortnite because uh, Epic was trying to sell Fortnite in-game purchases uh, independently of the app store. And there's still, I think, in courts over that. There's been, like, rulings and then... Um, oh, man, I love law stuff. And I'm... And I'm blanking on the word where you argue a, a fucking ruling. Oh, my God. And I... Uh, you have 30 days to... <sighs> this is so embarrassing. I really do love law. Like, I love reading stuff about the law. It's not counter. It's not... I'm just totally drawing a fucking appeal. 
Thank you. I got it. Thank you, me. I got it. You have 30 days to appeal this ruling. So I think they're still in court tying it up with appeals and stuff like that. But I, I wonder, though, I, th I wonder if the difference is that uh, Apple, and I don't know, but I wonder, I wonder if Microsoft will take Candy Crush off the App Store and Google Play and just be like, go through the web browser. You can play it there. I wonder if that's their thought process. I don't know. We'll find out. Because if it is, I don't know if that's the right play or not. Because I... People like people know the App Store. I'm not gonna go into fucking Safari or whatever the fuck on my iPhone to find a game when I can just get it off the App Store. I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna do. Anyway, so that's one of their ideas. And then this other report came out after I posted the headlines for everybody to comment on this week, so I don't have any listener feedback. But we know that Xbox is porting some of their games to other consoles, and it sounds like the floodgates might be opening now. A report from Windows Central said that Microsoft and Xbox are implementing a new plan codenamed Latitude, which will focus on more of their games getting to other platforms in an attempt to boost revenue, and more Xbox games have already been given the PlayStation green light. They're not saying which ones, but more games are apparently already greenlit to go over to PlayStation. Apparently, it's a very hot-button topic within Xbox these days is some want their games everywhere to sell more copies, while others are worried about the damage it'll do to the Xbox brand to start porting their big franchises to every console under the sun. If you don't remember, Sea of Thieves was one of the Xbox exclusives that got ported to PlayStation a few months ago, and it snuck into the top 25 selling PlayStation games. So there's some merit to that strategy, at least. Uh, I just want to say for the record, I think Halo and Starfield are the two that end up on PlayStation. I think the Master Chief Collection and Starfield end up over there. That's my call. And then obviously COD. There's no way COD. But we already knew COD wasn't going to be exclusive anyway. But I think I think Halo and, and Starfield are there by, I'll say, summer of 25. Both those games are on PlayStation to try to make some more money. Anyway, that's all your Xbox news. It is tough times in the desert level that is the Xbox ecosystem these days. As far as game releases on Xbox, uh, I don't see any. I don't see anything on any of the systems this week for big game releases. And then as far as sales, uh, Curse to Golf. I'm going to shout that one out. I love indie games. It's a half price indie game. Uh, you have to like, it's a roguelike golf game and it's just awesome. Look it up. It's on, if you like golf games or roguelikes, I think Curse to Golf is must play. I have it on Switch. It's fucking rad. And it's half price, $13. So that is my stamp of the week on the Xbox Marketplace. We have one stop left and we have one news story and one, ooh, I wonder what that means story because it's fucking Nintendo and that's all we ever get out of them. So let's switch it up. Check in with Nintendo. They added a couple of gems. To the, and I mean that genuinely, a couple of gems to the Game Boy library of the Switch Online service this week. Super Mario Land is the big addition. It's the first Mario Game Boy platformer from way back in the early days of the Game Boy. I'll be honest with everybody, I would have bet a steak dinner that that game was already on there. I was genuinely shocked. I guess I just never went in there looking for it. But if you were just like, hey, is Super Mario Land on Game Boy Online? I would have been like, of course it is. I'm, I was... Shut my mouth. I had no fucking idea that it wasn't on there. I'm going to do a replay of that for sure. That's a great little game. So that's awesome. And then the other two editions are Baseball, which is a basic non-MLB Game Boy Baseball game. Good times. And Alleyway, which is like Brick Baker, Arkanoid, etc. You move a paddle and bounce a ball into bricks to break them. I fucking love those types of games. I'm really happy with this batch of editions. Like, I, Super Mario Land and, and Alleyway are fucking, fuck yeah. I love both those games. Big get. So those are all available right now for anyone with a basic Nintendo Switch Online subscription in the Game Boy library. And for everybody asking, still no Pokemon. I don't think those are, I think they're reselling them to us at some point. I don't think those are ever getting added to this. If they were going to be added, if those were going to be added to Nintendo Switch Online, I think they would have happened by now. I think they're going to be selling them to us somehow. There's just no reason not to, so... Uh, Fallen Snow Kiku said, I'm a little surprised Mario Land wasn't in the first salvo of Game Boy games on the Switch, but I'm happy it's there now. I've been wanting to replay it. I know some of the other portable Mario platforms are better, but that one's got a special place in my heart. I agree with every word of that, other than I would have bet money that it was in that first batch of games. I was shocked it wasn't. I also have a soft spot for Super Mario Land. I played that game so much as a kid. I might do a replay of that on Twitch over the next few days, actually. That sounds like a good time. Bobby Litton said, I've always loved Super Mario Land. I just wish it lasted longer. It's easy and short like my love life. And Kevbot83 said, I never realized Mario was the guy in the alleyway cover until I saw the cover blown up on my TV. Same as he's in the baseball cover too. Mario is fucking everywhere. They just sneak him into everything. He's like, where's Waldo? He is fucking everywhere. Anyway, nice little batch of games coming to Game Boy Online. I like it. 
And then our final story of the week, Chris Pratt, the voice of Mario in the Mario Brothers movie from last year and practically the other, the other movie from 2023, did an interview with Games Radar, this, Games Radar this week excuse me, and said that he sees many more Nintendo movies on the horizon. Now, we know that a live-action Zelda movie and a second Mario flick are on the way, but that could just be the tip of the iceberg. Quote, I can't tell you much, but I can say that there's another Mario movie coming. It gets me very excited thinking about the world of Mario and Nintendo in general. I think over the next decade, we will be seeing lots of stories coming out of that world i was thrilled honored and blessed to be a part of the first one and moving forward i'm open to doing as much as and as little as they want from me i can't say much but i'm just as excited as everyone else end quote i know it's not a big story but uh and you might think it's a nothing burger and maybe it is but nintendo keeps the tightest lid you can possibly keep so if chris pratt is coming out and saying without the fear of the yakuza that something else is coming from nintendo he was told it was okay he went out there and planted the seeds. I, there's been some speculation that the fantasized Nintendo Cinematic Universe could become a thing after all, which I think would be fucking awesome. I don't know if you've seen it too. Danny DeVito did an interview this week saying he'd ask for a fortune to take the role, but that Nintendo should hire him to voice Wario, which I think would be fucking awesome. Uh, sick. I want more Nintendo movies. Mario movie was awesome. I'm excited for the Zelda one. I'm excited for Mario 2. Give me more Nintendo movies. Growlywog said, this is super exciting, though I find myself thinking about the logistics behind it. It takes illumination at least a couple years to make a Mario movie, and I'm not sure if they'll be able to stretch themselves across multiple projects. I'm curious if Nintendo will seek out other animation studios to make the impending NCU happen, or if they'll perhaps create their own studios like Marvel did when their movies started to explode. I can see it going either way. If you don't know, they actually have partnered with Sony to make the live action Zelda movie so I don't think they're opposed to working with others as long as they've got a lot of creative control I'm sure but the Mario movie made fucking bank they do that one or two more times maybe you're right maybe they do start their own theater their own company studio whatever the fuck it's called Kareem the Dream said I know the general consensus is that we'll get a Smash Brothers movie at some point which don't get me wrong would be awesome but I really think Metroid has the potential to be the best Nintendo adaption if done right please Nintendo I'm begging and Roger Russell said just give me a female driven hard action Metroid movie that we're all craving it will literally print money listen I think Metroid would make the best movie of the of the Nintendo franchises as well, but I just think the fact is, Mario, Kirby, well, Kirby probably, Zelda for sure, Pokemon if you count Pokemon, they have IPs that I think are worth more from a global standpoint than Metroid. But I Donkey Kong, of course. How did I forget my boy DK, uh, which we also know is in the works. But I think uh, I agree. I think that uh, and I want them. I wish they were all animated. I would like to see them all animated in the Mario Brothers style so that they could eventually come together and work like that. But I mean I'm gonna I'm like I'd be bullshitting you if I said I wasn't gonna go see all of them. I can't wait to go see Sonic 3. I'll be their opening winning opening weekend for the next Mario movie. I'll be their opening weekend for the Zelda movie. Until they fuck us, I have no reason to think they won't be good. I know the Sonic one isn't Nintendo, but I, I want a Metroid one too. I'd be there opening night. Metroid would be fucking awesome. Anyway, that's it. That's all your Nintendo news as far as game releases. I don't know if this is Biomutant was showing up on 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 Metacritic as a new Switch release. Did it just release on the Switch? Biomutant Switch release date. May 14th, 2024. All right. Biomutant is on the Switch now, I guess. Has a 59 on Metacritic. I don't know if anyone gives a fuck, but there you go. Uh, and as far as sales on the eShop, uh, again, Minecraft, half price. And then the unofficial official game of Remember the Game Industry, Slay the Spire, is 66% off $11 Canadian. Best $11 you'll ever fucking spend. And nobody saves the world. Runner up for my game of the year a couple years ago is 60% off $12 Canadian. Awesome fucking game. That is it for all your news. That is it for all my podcasts. And another week of Remember the Game hijinks. Thank you all so much for the support, everybody. And uh, I will be, I'm going to be away next week, but you'll still be getting all your episodes. We're going to be covering... Um, X-Men 2 The Clone Wars for the Sega Genesis on Remember the Game. I'll be counting down the 10 toughest games I've played on Expansion Pass on Thursday. And a week from right now, we'll be talking all the biggest news in the world of video games. I will also be on Twitch some over the next week playing old games. I think I'm going to take Super Mario Land for a spin. So come by and say hi, twitch.tv slash member the game. Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for the support. And I will talk to you next week. Vertical Noise, play me out. <laughs>
several episodes of experience that makes me an expert. All right, that'll do it for this week's game patch. I hope you all enjoyed that sneak peek of what we do over on Patreon every single Friday. If you did enjoy it, maybe consider checking us out at patreon.com slash remember the game. Our subscription started just $3 a month and you'll get one of those every single Friday. Ad free as well. Boom, right there in your mail or inbox or I guess maybe mailbox, whatever the fuck you can listen to it wherever you want. $3 a month also gets you expansion pass every single Thursday. So uh, yeah, ad free along with hundreds of old episodes. You're helping us keep the bills on around here. It's just pretty well wins all around. Patreon.com slash remember the game. Thanks so much for listening. And I'll talk to y'all on Wednesday with remember the game 297, which will be X-Men 2 Clone Wars for the Sega Genesis. That game's fucking awesome. Uh, take it easy, everybody. Cheers.